there's not really anything to see. It's kind of just canoeing in the dark in a creepy lake in the middle of nowhere in Puerto Rico. to Puerto Rico with my boyfriend for a few days. On the first day, we tried to do the bio tour. Now, this was a little stressful. Um, I didn't get to record a lot of stuff because our phones died, which is terrifying because the bio tour was actually not on the same island that we were staying at. Me and Zach pre-bought tickets for the ferry for our ride there and back. When we got down, we assumed that the bio tour would just pick us up from the ferry, but apparently it had a location within the island. So we had to buy like tickets to like a taxi or something to take us to the destination that the bio tour was gonna pick us up from. We pre-bought like a ride back, but because our phones died, we weren't able to get in contact with the same person. So we ended up having to pay another taxi for a ride back, which is so wasteful. And then we got back because our phones died, we had to buy more tickets to the ferry because we didn't have the barcode to scan to prove that we had tickets. So finally, the Biotour van shows up and it's this super creepy, just brown van with the windshields broken, side mirrors broken. It was incredibly creepy. And now there's this dude telling us, hey, I'm the guy of the Biotour, please get in my van. And all of the tourists are getting in so I got it. Oh, I was sitting all the way in the front because I wanted to get a recording of the windshield. But I was trying to be sneaky about it. Turns out my flash was on, so I wasn't very sneaky. But whatever, I, I just tried to play it off and put it in Zach's face and pretended like I was just trying to record him. We get there and we're driving in this really creepy road filled with just grass. And at this point I couldn't record because my phone was at 1%. I am in the middle of nowhere in this creepy dark road with grass that overpasses the van and Zach's phone was at 10. So he he turned it off and was trying to maintain the battery in case we needed it for emergencies, which was the responsible thing to do. But I just wanted to vlog. And finally we get deep in there and they tell us take off your shoes and just start walking into the water. And we're like, okay. It's the middle of the night by the way. So everything's really black. We can't really see anything. And we're just walking barefooted across the sand floor mud area finally we just start getting in canoes and we just start they give us all of our things that we need for the canoe our life vest i think that's all we got a life vest we get on the canoes and we just start canoeing and he brings out this like thing to cover us up so we can try to see the water because apparently the moon was too bright so at this point we're just kind of just hanging out there's not really anything to see it's kind of just canoeing in the dark in a creepy lake in the middle of nowhere in Puerto Rico. They dropped all of us off and then when we look at Zach's phone, it died. We have no phone now, so we, we didn't have the number of the lady to pick us up. So we had to go to one of these restaurants to ask them for the number of the vans that pick people up. And we told them like we gave our money to someone per, like so they can pick us up and they're like, we don't do that. <laughs> Thank God we had extra cash, but we, if I'm being honest, we did not have much because we brought only cards because we figured cash can get lost. Cards can get canceled. Ah. On the second day, we got to see more of like the beauty aspects of Puerto Rico. We went to St. Juan, like I guess we went to like the touristy areas. I don't know why I did quotation marks. We went to the tourist areas and it was actually a lot of fun and it was really, really beautiful. Honestly, I feel like I should say the good things too because it wasn't all bad. I don't blame Puerto Rico. I blame us and our luck. Well, me and Zach saw this river like online or something. Probably used to be a place that people went to, but after the hurricane, it, it got shut down for whatever reason, that's what I'm guessing. But someone handmade a sign that said, beep the horn when you're here. Which now, as an outsider perspective, I obviously see that their intention was for us to beat the horn and them to come to the car and probably rob us because the sign did not look professionally made, nor did it match any of the other signs on the gate. <laughs> I made Zach honk the horn. <laughs> and then we realized this is probably super sus and we try to get out of there. 
but they only left enough space for you to be able to drive straight through. Now the area where you would reverse, they put a metal cord so that way you damage your car if you try to reverse. And then unless you go beyond the gate, you can't make a U-turn to get out. And since the gate was locked, all we could do was wait to see what would happen if we haunt the whore. So yeah, after that, Zach still backed up and tried to force our way out of there. Passed by a couple of guys that were <laughs> telling us to come. We didn't. At least we didn't do that. After that, we left, and on our way down the mountain, there was this super cute dog. It was honestly the saddest experience. I stopped because Zach had an extra cheeseburger that he didn't eat. So um, I grabbed it and started ripping it up in pieces to make it easier for the dog to swallow. The dog ended up really liking me, really liking us, and it, it kept wanting to come home with us. And when we started driving away, the dog chased after the car, which for me, I started and crying. I beg Zach to turn around and beg Zach to stop. And I know now that it was probably for the best that he didn't because it was just going to prolong the inevitable, which was that we were going to have to leave the dog there at the end of the day because we couldn't afford a ticket to bring the dog back with us. I left the dog food and water, but it was honestly really hard for me to leave it behind. After that, we got to experience the most beautiful parts of Puerto Rico. Now, this was my favorite part of the trip. It was waterfalls and cave uh, caves and zip lining he warned us previously before we showed up about our phones and to be careful because a lot of people break their phones in doing these activities so i went and i bought a waterproof little i recorded like this little mushroom and i asked him to do it like slow motion so he switched it and then when he thought he switched it back he actually switched it to the fast version so the rest of the walk was sped up he sped it up in the only part that was actually funny which is when it started pouring on us yes we are hiking <laughs> in a tropical forest in pouring no. rain yeah kind of he got my zip lining part in slow motion because he can't seem to figure out which way his phone goes. He's like a little grandpa. I was able to get his videos so you have an idea of what it was like. And I got a video of myself. So in reality, it wasn't that big of a loss. Neither of our phones really should have got damaged from this because it's at least water resistant. Now this is where it gets really bad. I even took a video of me saying, yeah, your phone's waterproof, but like put it in this case just to be safe. Both of our phones broke i don't i i don't know zach's phone we like shut it off because it was being stupid and apparently you're not supposed to do that we didn't know we didn't even know it was broken so when we turned it off it would not turn back on and then my phone was okay throughout the whole thing but just to be safe i kept it in there and i stopped recording because i was scared well it turns out it was already damaged before i could even put it away i don't know if this water was magical if something was like happening here the guy who's our tour guy best guy ever i'm actually gonna link his down below because i have no negative thing to say about him i would go again and break my phone again but anyways we get in the car um he gave us a bunch of tips on places to go and things to see since it was like it was only two in the afternoon we figured let's go check out the beaches let's go hang out let's go explore puerto rico that was not the outcome of that day we couldn't even figure out our way down the mountain. You're just supposed to be able to twirl around and get down. Well, turns out mountains are a lot more complicated. My phone started acting up. The logo kept popping up and it would not turn on. It just kept turning on and off, on and off. I was freaking out because now me and Zach don't have phones. And keep in mind, we are two hours away from our Airbnb. So we have no idea where we are in Puerto Rico. We have no phones. And we don't even know the address to the place that we were staying at because we are completely irresponsible and completely rely on our phones. We're stuck on that mountain and I'm not exaggerating till four o'clock in the afternoon. So that was about two hours. From there, we just kept following any sign that said San Juan, which is not where we stayed, by the way. We stayed about an hour away from San Juan, but at least it was closer. And in San Juan, it's more tourist area. So we felt a little more familiar and comfortable. I know it was like borderline seven because the sun was going down and we finally got to just san juan not even our our airbnb not to a beach just just to the to the location to try to find help when we got there we stopped at a cvs we went inside and i'm not joking i handmade directions that i got from someone else's phone i knew my sister's number by heart and i gave her all my information just because you can never be too safe. So I called her and I asked her, like, can you give me the address? And then I put it on this guy's phone through Google Maps. I wrote down location to location. So like when it says make a right, make a left, I was able to write all of that down. But if we made any mistakes, 
we would be lost. In Puerto Rico, there are no signs. I don't know how people get around. They have to know what street they're on. So we were completely lost. So just turning out of the CVS, we fucked up. Thankfully, we were able to get to a Best Buy. So we went in there to buy a GPS, but it was like $200. And we didn't have that because we were only staying there for one more day. Yes, I know we are idiots for not bringing emergency money. Didn't think we were gonna have to buy this expensive GPS. So we started thinking about buying a phone since they're like, there's phones that were like $60. They're telling us that we needed to buy a line and if we wanted to cancel it and all this stuff. And it was just getting so complicated. But I, I begged the people to see if they can print us a map. So they printed out a map for us with all the directions neck beside it once we get to our airbnb the airport is still two hours or one hour and a half away from the airbnb yes i know it's very stupid that we chose places so far apart from each other just really wanted to get all around the islands and well we we did we did we wasted all our day just trying to figure out how to get back to our airbnb zach was literally getting to the point where he just wanted to rent out a new airbnb and say goodbye to all of our stuff and just stay near the near the airport since the airport was in St. Juan. I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to lose everything I had. We started following the map. It's late at night and it was raining, like pouring. So we could hardly see the signs. We were able to make it to our Airbnb. We didn't get to cancel the swimming with sea turtles. Um, we told them our prop art, like what happened to us, but because we didn't cancel it, it was kind of just like on us. So we weren't able to get a refund on that. We're trying to stay up. So that way we, because if we fall asleep, then we need to count on an alarm to wake us up in the morning to try to find the airport because we wanted to wake up really early to make sure we were just at least in San Juan because we still had to return the car, which was next to the airport, thank God. And then that was gonna get us a shuttle to the airport anyway. So all we had to focus on was getting to the car place. We were so exhausted from this whole trip. So staying up was just so difficult. So finally at like, four in the morning, we decided we can't do this. We turned on the oven timer and we put the timer for 7 a.m. When the little timer went off on the stove, we got up and we, we already had all of our stuff packed. Finding our way back was a lot easier. All I could do was ask Siri to do stuff for me. So I asked Siri to send me to my camera and I was able to record the papers before he left. I wanted to record the situation itself so you can have like an actual visual representation of what was happening. After that, we were able to make it to the airport and we were able to get home safe. Thank God we were able to fix Zach's phone. Well, not really, his phone is destroyed, but we were able to get the things out of it. And as for my phone, my phone was able to get fixed. So thank God everything on my phone is safe and everything in Zach's phone was technically safe, just not the phone. Sorry, Zach. I bought a bag of rice. We even took it on the airport. In fact, the guy was like, what is in this rice? And had to like open it because they thought we were like trying to smuggle something. And then he ripped it open and rice got everywhere. It was embarrassing. But he wrapped it up with tape and put the phone back in there. Super nice dude. And we were able to take our rice phone back with us. This trip was a lot of fun. Was it worth all the money invested and everything we lost? I don't know. But I know that I had a lot of fun and it was definitely an experience. And it's definitely a pretty cool and interesting story I can tell people. So, you know, you win some, you lose some. If you guys want to check out my video where I do a lot less talking and kind of just show the scenery of how everything was in Puerto Rico and it has some of the videos of what I was talking about here, you can go check that out.